Good evening, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick from Grace Episcopal Church. I'm the rector and pastor there here in Paducah, Kentucky. It's great to be with you this evening as we wind down our day and also just to time to relax and to let God uh, be a part of our dreams this evening. Today we commemorate the beheading of John the St. John the Baptist and we are remembering him specifically because of his great sacrifice and his prophetic voice. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence. We begin on page 127 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 127. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all of our sins, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 71, found on page 683. We'll be reading only a portion of Psalm 71, page 683, verses 1 through 7. Please read this together, or meditate it in your hearts wherever you might be. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Now let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor, for you are my hope, O Lord, God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall be always with you, of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures continue this evening with a passage from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. At that time, Herod, the ruler, heard reports that, about Jesus, and he said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead, and for this reason his, these powers are at work in him. For Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on the account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. Because John had been telling him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Though Herod wanted to put him to death, he feared the crowd because they regarded him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came and the daughter of Herodias danced before the company, she and she pleased Herod so much that he promised on oath grant her whatever she what might ask. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the head of John the Baptist here on a platter. The king was grieved, yet out of regard of his oath and for his guests, he commanded it to be given. He sent and had John's beheaded in the prison. The head was brought on a platter and given to the girl on who brought it to her mother. The, his disciples came and took the body and buried it. 
then went and told Jesus the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, in some ways, this is not really something why it's not called a festival day. It is a commemoration because we mourn the loss of John the Baptist, just as probably Jesus did as in his day. But it was because of John, and in the three, in three Gospels that we listen to, both from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we listen and hear the story of John's proclaiming repentance and also trying to understand his cousin Jesus that he wasn't even worthy of untying the thong strap on his sandal. We go to bed this evening not to necessarily be on a negative or a sad moment, but what we can do is celebrate the fact that God loves us so much that he gives us prophets. He gives us the prophets to speak truth to power. Even when it comes to being arrested, John the Baptist was willing to give his life to remind Herod what was in the scriptures about taking and being an adulterer and taking his brother's wife. These are the sad things that we do as human beings. We corrupt and become corrupted. And in our world, we sometimes can allow things of the world to get to the best of us because we're afraid of what the other possibilities could be. We go to bed tonight to allow God to enter into our dreams, to let us see where is God taking you and me? How is God speaking to you this night? Is he speaking how you can better maybe have a relationship with people in your life or how you interacted with others today? Whatever it might be, God is trying to show us a path, just as he did with John the Baptist, St. John the Baptist. And we remind us of his holiness and his great sacrifice, to love unconditionally. Amen. We continue our Compline prayers now on page 132. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And together, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us offer our prayer for this night. This, our prayer is uh, uh, for this commemoration of this colic for this day of St. John the Baptist's beheading. Almighty God, who called your servant John the Baptist to go before your, your son, our Lord, both in life and death, grant that we who remember his witness may with boldness speak your truth and with humility hear it when it is spoken to us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is the firstborn from the dead, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We also uh, lift up a prayer for this evening, our colic prayer on page 134 for Saturdays. We give you thanks, O God, for revealing your Son, Jesus Christ, to us by the light of his resurrection, grant that we who sing his glory, your glory, at the close of this day, our joy may abound in the morning as we celebrate the Paschal mystery through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
we continue our prayers, I invite you to join me on page 387, page 387, with prayers of the people, form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. I'd like to especially lift up prayers for those who, are, who have celebrated their birthdays this week, especially for John Shadle, Molly Desmukes, Hadley Desmukes, John Maxwell, and today we celebrate Will Black and Judith Lee McLeay. We celebrate these wonderful people, Will and Judith. Happy birthday to both of you and for those others who have celebrated birthdays. And for many of you who are celebrating a birthday right now or somebody you are praying for to celebrate in their life. We also pray in Thanksgiving for all those who celebrated their wedding anniversaries today, uh, uh, this week, Lindsay and David Black, happy anniversary late, earlier this week. And I'd also like to lift up all couples, especially my nephew, Kramer, who got married tonight or this afternoon uh, up in Dubuque, Iowa, to his best friend and soulmate, uh, Hannah Marie. We say thank you and welcome to the family, Hannah, and congratulations. And to all those brides and grooms who have been able to get married during uh, this COVID pandemic, we celebrate love and God's friendship. That they may be, that they, their works may find favor in your sight. We also pray, God, for those who have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We especially pray for those who are suffering because of Hurricane Laura and the after effects of its devastation. We pray for the people of Louisiana and throughout uh, in Tennessee and Texas, those on especially along the St. Charles coast in New Orleans. We pray for all those who are homeless and without power right now. We pray, oh God, that you may help deliver and bring um, the necessary uh, elements of electricity uh, and food and shelter to many of those people. We especially pray for those in California and Air, uh, Oregon and uh, Washington State who are suffering from wildfires right now, especially the people of California. We ask you to be with all the first responders, the fire people, police officers and state troopers, National Guard, all those in all throughout the south for the hurricane and for these wildfires and those who are battling these fires ask you lord to send your angels to protect them and those who are in need we pray for our doctors and nurses who are battling the coronavirus and those who are have gotten the virus itself and those who are waiting test results especially the 800 people in our state who uh, contracted the, the virus uh, today and eight people who passed away. And we ask you, Lord, to be with all those who are struggling because of illnesses and those who are uh, fighting illnesses, especially cancer. We ask you, Lord, to be with all of them and those who are uh, helping uh, serve the needy of our elderly population, especially, that they may be delivered from their distress Give to the departed eternal rest. We pray for all of our loved ones who've passed away, especially today and this week, especially all those because of this pandemic, because of the coronavirus, the thousands of people in our nation and around the world, the millions of people who've unfortunately have died because of this pandemic. We ask you, Lord, to help us find a vaccine, ease the suffering of those who have lost a loved one, especially when they couldn't be with them. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us offer our prayer, O Lord. Hasten, O Father, 
O coming to your kingdom, and grant that all your servants, who we lift up in faith, in, in with joy behold your Son, at the coming of your in the glorious majesty, Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. We continue our prayers at the bottom of page 134, page 134. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I hope you have a wonderful and restful sleep tonight. And hope you can join us and the people of Grace Episcopal Church at 10 a.m. If you don't have a faith home or uh, would like to find a new place and share, uh, be with us at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning for our uh, morning prayer service at Grace Episcopal Church. Thank you for joining me. And you can join me again next week, starting again on Tuesday afternoon at noon and right back here at 9 p.m. for Compline Night Prayer. If you like this and find it helpful for your spiritual life, share it with someone else. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Sweet dreams. <laughs>